The band returned in February 1979, anticipating the rewards of a welcome home tour to fund a further trip abroad. But by now, things aren't quite going Sailor's way. Yeah, so we came back to New Zealand. We left a huge amount of um, personal belongings, cars, amplifiers, clothing, um, guitars and storage. And we thought we'd go back, um, go back and do a tour of New Zealand and go back to America. But we had so, much, so many creditors back here in New Zealand, we couldn't really afford to, once the creditors had got hold of us, we had nowhere near enough money to go back to America, so we went to Australia instead, where we played for just over a year, which absolutely kicked our asses. Um, Australia was tough, really tough. Despite plenty of initial hype from the local music press, the sailors soon discover that making it across the ditch is going to be anything but plain sailing, with the band greeted by little more than arduous van rides and apathetic punters. Meanwhile, their fast-paced lifestyle is starting to take its toll. We toured, oh, constantly from the time the first album was released through New Zealand, then we went straight to America, um, came back, went to Australia, toured for a year right through Australia. As I say, Australia was very, very hard. Like, like, 18 hour, 24 hour trips in, by car um, to play to 11, 12 people, you know. Um, I, I thought that we'd sort of done our dash, actually. You know, it was just getting too hard, we're pushing shit uphill. And the antagonism from the industry there, um, it, was, it was really tough. No money, you know, living on, what was our per diem, like $5 a day or something. It's enough for a shawarma and a pint. <laughs> we kept going. We kept, uh, as Harry puts it, we got very good at being charming, finding places to stay. But we battled on. By the time we came back in 1980 to do sweet was we were half of us had hepatitis. We were. Um, I think I weighed nine, ten stone at the time. I was just a skeleton. We were sick, broke, tired, disillusioned, battered. We just needed a break. And I'm sure most working bands out there will know what that feels like. You know, when they had to go to Australia and start at the bottom again, and and they weren't buying, it just kicked the shit out of them basically. And it's, it's really hard if you're living, because they were over there for, I don't know, six, six or eight months, and whew, I've seen it happen to a few Kiwi bands, you know. We hear the success stories, the Dragons and the Split Ends, but there have been other great New Zealand bands that haven't done it, and it's just, you know, the exponents, you know, the exponents did it, you know, they never cracked Australia. They, they deserve to, but they've never done it, and you can ask Jordan, you know, it's the boys from the exponents, and that routine they get into, man. And it's not New Zealand, it's not going down the road here, you know, to Hamilton, you know, it's going from uh, Sydney to Adelaide, 900 miles, thanks very much, you know, and then go back again. Oh, it's, it can, it can knock the spirit out of you, and it's certainly knocked the spirit out of Hello Sailor. So, yeah, we just got pissed off and said, oh, it's called it a day, yeah, yeah. So they came back to New Zealand and all of a sudden, when they came back in, I think, I think it was February, 79, they, there was the dudes that boom, they jumped up a level and Citizen Band and uh, Toy Lovers uh, and reared their head there. And so all of a sudden they didn't have the game to themselves. And, and the fact that their lifestyle was starting to catch up with certain, certain members, they, uh, they couldn't take it for granted anymore anyway. A somewhat ill-advised appearance at Sweetwaters seems to confirm that the writing is on the wall. I think the, the Sweetwater gig was too late and it was like it was at midnight and I think we were just pretty much trashed by then. Every musician that night had three hours too much booze in them so you know Rene Gare band were pissed and Hello Sailor were pissed, it was piss night at Sweetwater's. 
shocking. It wasn't one of their great performances at all, and there was no energy there at all. You could see that they were bored. You could see that there, there, there were obviously problems within the ranks, as it were. And it was no surprise when they announced shortly after that, right, we're, you know, hell is no more, and we're going to call it a day at the Windsor Castle. I mean, there wasn't anyone that saw them. Anyone that, that was familiar with the band and their capabilities and saw them at Sweetwaters would have said, this band is definitely dying, you know. Sure enough, after five years together, the sailors decide they've had enough. Their gig at the Windsor Castle on the 23rd of February 1980 will be their final show. You know, that was a pub gig to celebrate, um, you know, where we'd come from, what we'd, you know, what we'd done, and going back to our favourite pub, which was the Windsor. You know, the Windsor going off on a Saturday night was, you know, great memories. When, when they fire, they, when, they, when they're hot, they, they are just so fucking good, such a good live band. And that, 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 that last gig at um, the Windsor Castle was, you know, when they split up uh, for the first time, 1980, it was definitely one of the best gigs I've ever been to in my life. And it was a loving audience and, 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 and we wanted it. And we wanted them to be good that night. We wanted it to be great and, you know, to, um, you know, to validate our belief that they were a great New Zealand band, you know, and so they delivered. We almost thought, oh, shall we carry on, you know? The gig was that good, but it was just one final, one final bash, you know? Cast adrift from the local scene that almost single-handedly reinvigorated, it was no surprise to see the sailors run aground. Sadder still, it seemed the members were not too unhappy to be moving on, chastened by what had clearly been a bumpy ride. You, you feel a sense of relief when a band breaks up because you know, you've, you've made the decision to break up for various reasons and a lot of it's to do with the chemistry and the people. Um, we'd cry in a part of it. Um, you know, there wasn't that sort of brotherhood thing that we had in the early days. Um, but yeah, I think there was a lot of relief, you know, Graham and Lyle went straight back to Australia and I stayed here and Paul arrived, Paul Houston arrived and we, we started another band straight away. Hello Sailor's three songwriters now set their sights on solo endeavours. And to the surprise of those that had written them off, most notably New Zealand's punk movement, the trio all go on to enjoy critical and commercial success in their own rights. In fact, Dave McCartney's Pink Flamingos, formed with Dragon keyboardist Paul Hewson, eclipsed Sailor's impressive successes in their short tenure, pulling in huge crowds. Dave McCartney and the Pink Flamingos were, got bigger crowds than Hello Sailor ever did. They were, they were huge. You know. So Dave, in fact, went on to bigger things. We had decided to form a band which just uh, had short pop songs and it was, it coincided with that power pop period of new wave music, you know, we had good, sharp, hard, fast, economical pop songs. We did one good album, one good sort of extended album, which is Remember the Alamo. And off that first album we had like four hits, plus we, we, we did the music awards for two, cleaned up for two years, it was quite good. And just once again, we, we did the, Austra the Australian thing, killed us. Same deal. Brazier isn't far behind with his critically acclaimed solo release, Inside Out, an album hurriedly released not long after Sailor's dissolution. It's one of the great, it's one of the top ten New Zealand albums, in my opinion, Inside Out. It's, it's magic, it's, it's track after track. Worryingly, the album also marks a low point in Brazier's life, as he battles drug addiction and has some run-ins with the police. Um, I had gotten into trouble with the law um, over a possession of drugs, looked as though I might go to jail for a period, so I released Inside Out, I had all these songs, and I very hurriedly released Inside Out because I wanted to get these songs out of the way. That album was recorded for $10,000, and it's one of the only Hello Sailor albums or associated 
albums that still, to this day, has never been deleted. So there's a lot to be said for albums done in passion and desperation. It comes through on the record too, it's got a real, that album's got a real atmosphere to it. A real desperado. It's a real Outlaws album, <laughs> if I might say so. Take its turn For now We are Billy Bones Harry Lyon makes his mark too with the band Coup d'etat enjoying a top ten hit with Doctor I Like Your Medicine which goes on to take out single of the year at the New Zealand Music Awards I suppose it was good to have some success, and success is always um, pleasant. <laughs> you know, I had a lot more um, songwriting input into that, and sort of split between Jan Preston and myself. So, more than one song and album, yeah. <laughs> Graham's new band, The Legionnaires, is the next project to emerge, debuting at Sweetwaters in 1982. Brazier initially hires young performers with a bit of street cred to join the band, but quickly finds himself flanked by old friends. I mean, that was a, an ever-evolving band. It started off um, uh, with Graham, of course. He had these bunch of young guys. They weren't particularly good. <laughs> the original Legionnaires weren't, weren't particularly good. And one by one, with people leaving, it became Hello Sailor. Brazier, however, grows dissatisfied with the project and bails out. One of the guitar players at say from Hollow Sailor came in and fired my band and put in his own favourite musicians. So Brazier's Legionnaires became somebody else's Legionnaires. So I left. I think Graham just had enough. It just the, the whole thing had just become too much. It's, it was it was. Hard work, yeah. So basically, yeah, I think you could say that he left his own band. Bye, bye, bye.